Imagine two revolutionary cars standing at the edge of history. One, born in Africa, designed by a man who defied the laws of physics. A self-charging car that needs no fuel, no plug, no solar panels. The other, Aptera, a futuristic machine from Silicon Valley that drinks sunlight and promises a thousand miles of range on a single charge. But what happens when these two visions of the future collide? This isn't just a race of cars. It's a global showdown of ideas, innovation, and destiny, setting the stage. On one side stands Maxwell Chikambutso, a quiet African inventor who shocked the world with his self-powered technologies. His creation? A car that generates its own energy, endlessly recharging itself as it drives. No gas stations. No charging stations. Just freedom. On the other side... We have Aptera Motors, a California startup arm with billions in funding, sleek solar panel bodywork, and a promise, a car powered by the sun itself. Both inventions claim the future, but the question remains, whose future will the world embrace? The promise of Aptera. Aptera entered the stage with boldness, a three-wheeled spaceship-like design, up to 1,000 miles on a single charge, solar panels across its roof and hood, Harvesting sunlight while parked or in motion, it's been called the most efficient car in the world, a marvel of aerodynamics and solar engineering. Backed by American investors in Silicon Valley media, Aptera's rise looked unstoppable. But then Africa answered. Maxwell's self-charging car emerges. While the world looked to Silicon Valley, a workshop in Zimbabwe whispered of something more profound. Maxwell's self-charging EV. It didn't need sunlight. It didn't need charging stations. It didn't even need the grid. It was powered by a mysterious energy system, one Maxwell claimed could run indefinitely, creating a closed loop of power. To critics, it was impossible. To believers, it was the key to freeing humanity from the energy trap. And now, the two cars stood on the same stage. The global showdown begins. The announcement shook the auto industry. For the first time, Aptera and Maxwell's car were invited to showcase at the same Global Innovation Forum. Investors, scientists, and journalists from every continent gathered to witness what many were calling the battle for the energy crown. On one side of the arena, Aptera, sleek and futuristic, with its solar wings glistening under the lights. On the other, Maxwell's mysterious machine, unassuming but carrying whispers of a limitless engine, the room held its breath. The challenge begins. The stage was set. A long test track stretched across the desert plains, chosen for its scorching sun, brutal winds, and endless horizon. The perfect battlefield. Aptera rolled forward first, its aerodynamic frame cutting the air like a blade. As the sun poured down, its solar panels went to work, silently pulling power from the sky. Cameras flashed. Investors cheered. This was a machine designed for the future, sleek, efficient, and undeniably real. Then, Maxwell's self-charging car eased onto the track. It looked ordinary. No solar panels. No visible technology. Just a car. But as it moved forward, something extraordinary happened. The dashboard lights glowed at full charge. The energy meter? Unmoved. Zero decline. Whispers rippled through the crowd. Was this really happening? The first test, distance. The rules were simple. Drive until the cars ran out of energy. Aptera's engineers were confident. Their car had been tested for over 1,000 miles of range under ideal conditions. Surely, it would outlast anything Maxwell had brought. The flag dropped. Both cars sped forward. Aptera surged gracefully, its futuristic body gliding with little resistance. Maxwell's car, less flashy, kept pace effortlessly. Every mile that passed brought louder murmurs from the audience. At 200 miles, Aptera still had solar backup. At 500 miles, the car kept pushing, though its battery gauge showed steady decline. At 900 miles, tension filled the air. Aptera was close to its limit. And Maxwell's car? Still running. Energy gauge? Unchanged. The world watches in shock. By mile 1,000, Aptera's engineers celebrated. They had proven their claim. But then, Aptera began slowing. Its battery indicator reached near empty. The solar panels were no match for the demand of continuous high-speed driving. Eventually, 
The car rolled to a stop at 1,012 miles. The crowd erupted in applause. But Maxwell's car kept going. 1,200 miles. 1,500 miles. 2,000 miles. The car didn't slow. The gauge didn't move. Scientists in the stand scrambled to understand what they were seeing. Investors leaned forward. Phones buzzing as news headlines began flashing across the globe. African self-charging car outruns Aptera defies science. Panic in the science world. As Maxwell's car passed the 2,500-mile mark, the air around the test track grew tense. Journalists shoved microphones at engineers, desperate for explanations. How is this possible? One reporter demanded, pointing at the unchanging battery gauge. A professor from MIT shook his head. It's not. Energy can't come from nowhere. Unless, he trailed off, unwilling to finish his thought. Some whispered about quantum energy extraction, others about hidden generators. A few even accused Maxwell of staging a trick. But every camera feed, every sensor on the track, confirmed the same reality. The car was still running. Governments step in. It didn't take long before government representatives began arriving. Suited officials in the U.S., China, and Europe appeared on the sidelines, taking notes and making calls. This was no longer just about a race. It was about control of the future of energy. If Maxwell's technology was real, and right in front of them, it clearly was. It could collapse the oil industry overnight. Trillions of dollars. Entire economies. Military dominance. Everything was at stake. And they wanted it. The investor frenzy. Meanwhile, word spread across financial markets. Maxwell's company, once dismissed as a fringe African startup, was now being hailed as the most valuable startup in history. Billionaires began calling, offering blank checks. Stock traders begged for IPO news. African investors, long overlooked in the global tech race, rushed to buy stakes, sensing this was their chance to lead the world. But Maxwell? He didn't rush. He stood calmly at the track's edge, arms folded, watching his car speed pass yet again. He knew this wasn't about money. It was about freedom from energy dependence. And while investors celebrated, corporations grew nervous. The shadow moves. In the crowd, unnoticed by most, men in dark suits whispered into earpieces. Their expressions were grim. They weren't cheering. They weren't excited. They were calculating. Because if Maxwell's technology spread freely, it could destroy everything they controlled, from oil pipelines to electric utilities. And when giants feel threatened, they don't just watch. They act. The sabotage attempt. Late into the night, as the self-powered car sped under floodlights, something strange happened. The live broadcast suddenly flickered. For a moment, the feed cut to static. When it returned, viewers gasped. Two men had slipped onto the track, carrying what looked like electromagnetic disruptors, devices capable of scrambling electronics. Security rushed in, but one of the saboteurs managed to aim the device directly at Maxwell's car. Sparks crackled through the air. The crowd held its breath. And then, nothing happened. The car roared past them, smooth and unstoppable, as if mocking the attempt. The disruptor short-circuited, exploding in the saboteur's hands. Maxwell's invention had just proven itself not only limitless, but immune to sabotage. Rising tensions. The failed attack sent shockwaves across the world. On social media, hashtags like hashtag Maxwell's car and hashtag energy revolution exploded, trending across every platform. But behind closed doors, governments held emergency meetings. Oil company stock prices plummeted. Energy corporations prepared lawsuits, while powerful lobbying groups demanded the technology be suppressed. And in the middle of it all, Maxwell received a message. Not a call. Not an email. But a sealed envelope slipped under his hotel door. The note was short, written in neat block letters. Stop, or you won't live to see your invention change the world. Maxwell's response. Maxwell didn't flinch. He had been underestimated his entire life. Told his ideas were impossible, laughed out of boardrooms. Now, standing at the edge of history, he knew there was no turning back. He called a press conference. Cameras flashed as he walked to the podium, holding up a small metallic module. The heart of his invention. This, 
he said, voice steady. Isn't just a car. It's freedom. Freedom from oil. Freedom from pollution. Freedom from control. The crowd erupted. Reporters shouted questions. Investors leaned forward. But in the shadows, the men who had tried to stop him clenched their jaws. The battle for the future of energy had only just begun. The world reacts. The press conference footage spread across the globe within minutes. News anchors replayed Maxwell's words on loop. This isn't just a car. It's freedom. In Beijing, a team of engineers huddled around a screen, whispering about whether they could replicate the module. In Silicon Valley, investors scrambled to reach Maxwell, some offering $10 billion in cash for exclusive rights. And in oil-rich capitals, leaders slammed their fists on polished tables, declaring his invention a national security threat. It was no longer just about a car. It was about control of the world's energy future. The counter move. Just two days later, Aptera, the futuristic U.S. solar EV maker, announced a sudden event of their own, a massive unveiling in Los Angeles. They showcased their sleek, solar-charged three-wheeler, claiming to travel 1,000 miles on sunlight alone. Cameras captured the moment their CEO threw down the gauntlet. Maxwell isn't the only one building the future. The future is here, and it's ours. The media framed it as a global duel. Africa's self-charging car versus America's solar titan. The hidden alliance. But Maxwell wasn't shaken. While Aptera dazzled the West, he was forming a quiet alliance. Whispers emerged that he was in talks with an African energy consortium. Leaders from Nigeria, Kenya, South Africa, and Ghana, who saw his car as a way to leapfrog centuries of dependency. One African minister declared off-camera. If we back him, we won't just own cars. We'll own the future power itself. It wasn't just business. It was becoming a continent's fight for energy independence. The silent war begins. Behind a polished press events and glossy car reveals a silent war was brewing. In the corridors of power, documents began circulating. Anonymous leaks exposed oil companies lobbying governments to shut down Maxwell's operations, labeling his technology untested and dangerous. Meanwhile, mysterious drones hovered near his factory at night. Workers whispered of men in black SUVs watching from a distance. Maxwell wasn't just building cars anymore. He was defending a revolution, the Continental Test Drive. To prove his invention's legitimacy, Maxwell announced something no one expected, a Pan-African Test Drive. A fleet of self-charging cars would travel from Johannesburg to Cairo across deserts, mountains, and bustling cities without stopping to refuel or recharge. The route was brutal. 7,000 kilometers of unpredictable terrain. Reporters called it the impossible journey. But Maxwell simply smiled. Impossible is just another word for untested. Aptera strikes back. Aptera, unwilling to be outshined, staged their own counter-challenge. They unveiled the Solar Grand Tour, a fleet of their futuristic cars driving coast-to-coast -coast across the U.S. powered solely by the sun. Western media lit up, branding it. Africa's Sun vs. America's Sunday. Suddenly, the world had two parallel spectacles, two continents, two visions, one fight for the future. The hidden sabotage. But as Maxwell's fleet prepared to roll out Johannesburg, his engineers discovered something chilling. Several vehicles showed tampered wiring, as if someone had broken in and tried to disable the core modules. One mechanic whispered nervously, They don't want us to succeed. Maxwell clenched his jaw. This isn't just about proving the car works. It's about proving Africa cannot be stopped. The journey across Africa. The convoy of self-charging cars rolled out of Johannesburg at dawn. Thousands lined the streets, cheering, waving flags, chanting Maxwell's name. For days, the cars glided through rugged terrain, dusty deserts, muddy jungles, and congested cities, without stopping for a single recharge. People ran alongside the vehicles in awe. Farmers left their fields, children pointed in disbelief, and elders murmured, We are witnessing history. At every stop, the cars recharged themselves silently, proving that energy can indeed come from within. The final stretch. As the fleet entered Cairo, the atmosphere was electric. Cameras flashed, drones hovered, and the world watched live. 
against all odds. Maxwell had done it. 7,000 kilometers without a single drop of fuel, without plugging in once. The crowd erupted, chanting, Africa, 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 news anchors declared. History has been rewritten by a man the world tried to ignore. The global aftershock. Stock market shook. Oil company shares tumbled. Government scrambled to secure meetings with Maxwell. Silicon Valley investors, who once laughed at him, now begged a partner. And Aptera? Even they congratulated him, admitting Africa had pushed the world forward. The legacy begins. That night, Maxwell stood before the world in Cairo. With a quiet smile, he said, Energy does not belong to corporations. It belongs to humanity. Today, Africa has shown the future is not imported. It is homegrown. The crowd roared. Fireworks lit the sky. And as the self-charging cars lined up behind him, glowing under the lights, one thing was clear. This was no longer just a car. This was the beginning of a new era.